My name is Dr. Bobby Sines from Parkhurst New Vision in San Antonio, Texas. And I'm Mitch Ibach, an optometrist with Vance Thompson Vision in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We'd like to invite you to our lecture at AAO in the World Congress of Optometry on Sunday, October 27th, where we'll continue to talk about cataract surgery with coexisting ocular disease. We'd love to see you there. When a patient comes in with decreased vision, one of the things that we're going to be talking about is what do you do when a patient that has cataracts has dry eye, or if the patient has cataracts and fugues, or if the patient has cataracts and glaucoma, or if the patient has cataracts and vitro macular traction, what do you do for these patients? What do you do if the patient has cataracts, EBMD, fugues, dry eye, glaucoma, vitro macular traction, and even ERM? Mitch, what do you do for these patients? Well, not starting with an easy one, Bobby. It's important to know that it's very common for us to see patients with cataracts and coexisting ocular disease. Patient expectations at the time of cataract surgery have never been higher because of the fantastic technologies that we have. On a daily basis, we're treating cataracts and distance vision or correcting astigmatism, and in many cases doing a presbyopia correcting or distance and near correcting lens as well. In our patients with concurrent cataracts and glaucoma, we have the ability to combine cataract surgery with minimally invasive glaucoma surgery devices to even further lower the eye pressure after cataract surgery. Because of these fantastic technologies and patient expectations, we need to be able to educate patients about coexisting ocular diseases, the surgeries that may benefit them, and the best order to perform them in. Treat dry eye aggressively in your cataract patients, and that means more than just artificial tears. And don't forget about your patients with cataracts who are also taking topical glaucoma drops. We can combine cataracts with minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries to further reduce their interocular pressure and maybe decrease their medication burden. In patients that have EBMD and Salzman nodules, we recommend removing the Salzman nodules and the EBMD prior to cataract surgery because this can affect biometry. Removing this nodule only takes three seconds and can make a huge impact. In patients with cataracts and Fuchs dystrophy, it's important to remember that the Fuchs dystrophy causes increased glare and further decreased visual quality. At the time of cataract surgery, we can combine cataract surgery with an endothelial keratoplasty and really improve the quality of life. So join us October 27th at 10 a.m. as we talk about the do's and don'ts of cataract surgery with coexisting ocular disease. We'll see you then.